It is 29 minutes to the top of the hour on this terrific Tuesday. Time for the faith walk of the day. Psalm 71 and 50, 15 through 18 says, My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day. For the number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, you do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Listen, let me tell you about the power of a testimony. Uh, there's always, it's always better than what you think when someone is telling a story. You know, you hear of a, of a kid that graduates and then you find out that they were homeless or they didn't have any parents or they had to walk five miles to, to school. The story is bigger. Some of us hold the best details of our story because maybe you're embarrassed by it. Don't be afraid to tell the details. I love telling people that when me and Tina moved out on our own, our rent was $500 and we couldn't afford that, that we went to the 99 cent store to buy food and pots and towels and everything else. And then there was this friend that came by and bought great groceries. It wasn't that she just bought gross groceries. It was that I had been sitting at home with no food trying to figure out what I was gonna do. And I remember that God put me on somebody else's mind and they blessed me right at the right time. When I tell that, I know somebody else that's sitting somewhere hungry, their faith is stirred. And they understand that they're not in it alone. Don't be afraid to share your testimony, not for you, but for the glory of God. The Bible says he'll take good care of us and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That phone call that you got just at the right time, that was God. That's a testimony. Share that with somebody. You know, the fact that you got your first house, maybe it took longer than you thought, but you got the house. Tell the testimony. Tell them that nobody in your, in your family ever owned a home before and what the struggle was and how hard it was. But then you got it. Don't leave out those good juicy details of your testimony, you know, of, of you've been trying to have a baby and, and it took so long and people told you you never would and then you got a beautiful baby. Tell the testimony. Tell how the enemy tried to steal your joy. Tell the, how, the, how he tried to take you down. Tell the details of those testimonies and watch it not only bless other people, but it blesses God. Remember all the little things. That's why I try my best to stay grateful, to remind myself of all that God has done. I mean, little stuff like being on the side of the road and somebody just coming, putting gas in my car. And I was sitting there going, what in the world I'm going to do? This was before cell phones. They still had call boxes on the freeway. I'm dating myself. And I was trying to figure, did I have enough change to even call? And somebody randomly stops and help. Or when Tina had an accident and her car was flipped upside down, turned the wrong way, just so happened somebody from our church family was passing. That's details to the story that will bless somebody. Listen, don't be afraid to tell your testimony. Yes, you may be happily married, but there may be some other things in your past. Don't you dare be embarrassed by what God has brought you through. If he's blessed you, maybe your family did have to sleep in the car, but now you live in nice. Tell that testimony. Yes, God provided. God opened the door. God made the way. You may not realize it was God. I know it was God. And if you tell of his goodness, you tell of his mercy, God gets the glory. All right. Don't don't neglect to give God the glory. Tell the whole story. Yeah. Even the stuff that you felt was so ugly. I can't tell that part. Yes, you can. Tell what God did. Tell of the good things that he's done in your life. All right. That is my faith walk for today. That was Psalm 71, 15 through 18. Time for the Ericaism of the day. Many of you know that I have a book called More Than Pretty that's coming out September the 24th. It's actually available for pre-order now on Amazon.com. Um, but in the book, I'm talking about the problem with pretty. Um, I've had an interesting relationship with the word pretty. So I grew up with a father who always told me my and my family, you know, she's just a pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. And, and you embrace that. And then you grow a little older and then boys call you pretty. But it's a kind of a term of manipulation. I want to tell you pretty so I can see if I can get in your head or maybe even your pants. Um, and then, you know, even becoming uh, Erica Campbell, the solo artist, uh, you know, oh, she's so pretty as to minimize my intelligence or to minimize my business acumen or to minimize my gifts and talents. So while I appreciate the word, I understand the word. So I don't vilify the word, but I do understand. Um, and if you don't have this information, you've probably given this word way too much power. Someone calling you pretty, what does it really mean? What do their words really mean? Does it affect what you see in the mirror? 
Um, your belief in how you look and how you feel about you has to go much deeper than what is on the outside, deeper than your hair or your makeup. I know women who literally would not go to church because their hair isn't right. I'm not going to praise the Lord because my hair isn't right because of how I look. Don't you ever let how you look on the outside stop you from being great, stop you from praising our great God, stop you from going to work or anything like that. You know, it, it's it's your heart that needs to shine. There were beautiful women in the Bible. We know that Sarah was beautiful and Rahab uh, was beautiful and Abigail was beautiful. Abigail was also described as an intelligent woman. We know Esther was beautiful, but she was very smart as well. So beauty and brains do go together. Um, and we still have a lot of stereotypes to, to knock down, especially in this very sexist world that we live in. And it is the enemy's agenda to make us more, um, more focused on just the outer appearance, more focused on what people say. It's really not about what people say. It's what you know to be true about you. It's what God says about you. It is your confidence that you have when you wake up in the morning. And listen, I understand maybe the enemy has done a number on you because of what you've experienced. Maybe you've got your heart broken a time or two, or maybe you didn't hear that you were the pretty girl growing up and that's all you've wanted. Well, if the enemy knows that's what you wanted, he's going to use that to his advantage. Make sure that you are so solid in who you are. Pick up the book and find out what God says about you. Many people have been manipulated with that word. Little girls manipulated, grown women manipulated, business situations were manipulated because, oh, come here. Oh, she's so, she's so gorgeous. Oh, she's so pretty. She's so, you know what I mean? I don't take offense, but I definitely pay attention when people start that way. And I didn't come here for pretty. If I came here for business, that shouldn't be the first thing that you say about me. If I came here to work, that's not the first thing I want to hear. Oh, she's so, oh, she's so pretty. I thank you and I appreciate that, but I make a mental note um, of the word and the, the tone and how it's being used. Is it, is it for manipulation? You know, is it trying to soothe some low self-esteem that you assume that I have because I am a pretty girl? I'm pretty, but I'm also smart and I'm also anointed and I'm also called and I'm also chosen. And I know all those things about myself. So I don't allow that word to do damage to my soul or the lack of hearing that word do damage on this. So let's pay attention to who we are, women, and pay attention to the tools that the enemy uses. He uses everything. He uses if you heard it growing up or if you didn't. He uses it if there was another girl that was the most beautiful at, at the girl at school and it's not you. And you spend your life trying to meet this standard that is unrealistic, that the enemy only put in the way to block you from your blessings, to block you from your purpose, to block you from who you are. Don't let pretty or, or the lack thereof stand in the way. Because only you can define that. The most beautiful people have been really, really ugly. And then the most people who are, there are some people who are not traditionally beautiful, who have absolutely the most beautiful spirits I ever encountered in my life. Make sure you're shining from within, all right? Don't work on the outside. Don't, don't only focus on the outside, but focus on the inside, all right? That is my Erica Izzy for today. Love you and I mean it. All right, let's end with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you high. We love you. We trust you. We bless you. We appreciate you, God, all that you've done for us, to us, and through us. We say yes to you, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your plan for our lives, Lord Jesus. We dare not reject a calling that you've placed on us out of fear, Lord Jesus. We dare not say no because we don't know how to move forward. You will give us what to do and when to do it. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. We thank you, God. For those that we will share your goodness with God, those that will come saying, what must I do to be saved, Lord Jesus? We want people to know you more than they know us, God. So help us to be shining for you everywhere we go. In Jesus name, I pray. I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. In your name, I pray. Thank God. Amen. All right, good people. We will be back tomorrow. We'll be faith walking. Enjoy living on Get Up Mornings.